Hello, welcome to episode number 363 of the TWA2A Challenge Run. It's going to be Friday Night Smackdown for week one of May 2023, and it is fucking the 4th of June. And I'm only just starting May. I have been very combination of busy and or doing things that aren't related to TEW. So, <laughs> um, believe it or not, this is the first, I believe, since the draft. Yeah, last week's show was the draft. That was fucking nearly a month ago at this point. But we move um hopefully i won't be as inconsistent going forward but yeah just been doing other stuff nothing really special but anyway how can we forget the ending of last week's show that saw the crowning of a new world heavyweight champion um or two actually in fact pete dunn beat gunner to bring the world heavyweight championship over to smackdown and then Immediately, Carmelo Hayes finally cashed in money in the bank to take the title from Pete Dunne after just, like, a few minutes. But that's not all, because tonight we've got a fatal four-way to determine the number one contender for Candice LeRae's title at Judgment Day. It's going to be newcomer to the brand, Florence, um, Sonya Deville on her return to SmackDown, um, Yutami, and somebody else whose name escapes me in a fatal four- Oh, Dakota Kai, yeah, that's why I forgot. And we're also going to have Asuka and Cora Jade's match, as well as a face-to-face -face between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns to bring an end to this once and for all. Without any more further ado, though, let's jump straight into the show. Adam Pearce kicks off the show, and he comes to the ring. Oh, he's just stood in the ring, that's when the show kicks off. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is a new era here on Friday Night Smackdown. This is the first episode of Friday Night Smackdown since the 2023 WWE Draft with our new rosters in place. Now, with Smackdown in the draft, it's always become this land of opportunity, and I'm willing to make this the land of opportunity all over again. We've got so many names hoping to break out on the blue brand over the next 12 months. Now, there is one more situation that has to be addressed, and that's regarding the World Heavyweight Championship you see in the draft. Both Gunter and Cody Rhodes were drafted to Raw, so I had to panic last week and bring Gunter to SmackDown for one last night to crown and hopefully crown a new World Heavyweight Champion for the Blue Brand when Pete Dunn demanded that opportunity. And ladies and gentlemen, I promised you a champion, one World Heavyweight Champion to lead SmackDown after the draft into the future. And I delivered on that promise. And here he is. Out comes Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Melo coming out with the World Heavyweight title. Tricky coming out next to him. And I imagine they've got like a bag or something. Like a big bag. And Melo gets into the ring. And him and Trick goes, talk your talk, Melo, first, before you, you say what's on your mind right now. As the new World Heavyweight Champion, I gotta tell you, the last year here on SmackDown, we've been about it, about it. Ever since we stepped through in last year's draft, we've been the A players on the A show. And now, finally, after all this time, you picked up opportunity perfectly, Melo, cashing in on that bum-ass Pete Dunne after he had been for a brutal war against one of the most toughest wrestlers on the entire roster in Gunter. And now you are the World Heavyweight Champion. Some people call it an act of cowardice. I call it an act of brains. I just want to say I'm, br I'm so glad to be your right hand man. Now talk your talk, Melo. Then Melo takes the mic. And he goes, It's been coming. Ladies and gentlemen, since last year, last year at Money in the Bank, when I retrieved that briefcase, you should have seen it coming. I told you I laid it all out beat by beat. I was going to beat any former world champion who stepped in my way. Let's count those names, Trick. Edge, beat him. Keith Lee, beat him. Seth freaking Rollins, beat him. John Cena. The list goes on and on and on. Until last week, Pete. When I saw you there, you went to war with Gunter like you do so well. I saw my lucky number 13. I saw my big break and I don't miss. So I shot my shot, and just like always, I didn't miss. Now, first of all, and he does the, he goes, rest in peace to all my ops. 
we get that spot again. We're going to run that back on the main roster because it's fucking great. And then second, this, this big gold belt for many, many years has been the symbol of excellence here in WWE. You're seeing this, ch- this championship on the shoulders of legends. Got like Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, even new up names. You got Triple H, Batista, The Undertaker, John Cena, who we know I'm better than him. So this title represents the big names of the past. But I'm, I'm the future, I'm the here and the now, I am him. And I'm better than all those people who came before me. So, to usher in the him era, I say, out with the old and in with the new. And he drops the big gobelt on the floor. And then, out from the bag, Tricky pulls out the new World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> I, like, I, I knew I was going to have to drop it over at some point. This seemed like the most fake place to do it. And Carmelo's going to get the heel heat for getting rid of the big gold belt and slapping a big W on this one. Because he's the future. And this that, that belt's from the past. This is the, this is the new. Obviously, it's still the same lineage and all that. It's just a different design for the belt. And he puts it on his shoulder. He goes, oh, now look at that, Melo. That right there. Now you look like a champion. You look like the face of this brand. You look, dare I say, like him. Out comes Pete Dunne. And I imagine there's like balloons and shit all over the ring. And he just comes in and like pops the balloons, like tears, tears the set apart. And Melo goes, whoa, 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 relax, Pete, relax, Pete, 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 relax. You see, I get it. I get it, you ain't happy with me. And I wouldn't be either if I, you know, I was outsmarted by the greatest wrestler here on SmackDown. I, w- I won't be angry, I'd be angry too. But here's the thing, Pete, you lost. Okay, you were the World Heavyweight Champion. You're one of those many, many names that I just listed. Synonymous with that old championship, the past. I'm the future, I'm the here and then, I'm the now, and you ain't ever gonna be on my level because there ain't nobody on my level because I'm not just the guy, the future, I'm the man, I'm him, you are irrelevant. And the Pete snatches the mic off Trick, probably. And he goes, you do a lot of running your mouth, don't you? Well, I don't come out here to run my mouth to prove that I'm the best. I'll step in this ring and I'll knock people's heads off to prove it. And if you want to go one-on-one, fair and square against me, I'll end your stupid little reign. And then Tricky steps goes, whoa, 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 whoa. As the A champion here on SmackDown, we've got to make the A grade decisions, okay? So Pete, you seem bad about it. You seem ready for action. Oh, guess what? Guess, guess it wasn't ready for action. That's right. Not Mellow here. Oh, Tricky Willy. He's going to give you the gift of the gab and the gift of the jab. Okay? And in the main event tonight, if you want that World Heavyweight Championship match, you got to go through me to get it. That seems about it, about it to me. And then Adam Pearce gets this still on the ramp. He's like, well, it's official. Tonight's main event, Pete Dunne will go one-on-one with Trick Williams. And then the segment ends. Yeah, big, end, big opening segment. New world title. Um... Pete Dunn versus Trick Williams set up, and I guess if Pete wins, he gets a shot at Carmelo Hayes' title. We actually open up with Cora Jade versus Asuka, and I imagine the match is, um, as soon as the bell rings, like Asuka goes to kick Cora, like she to, to, to go to Kai at Mania, but Cora like ducks underneath it and then like immediately rolls out of the ring, and she like she's like I'm t- I'm just preparing myself, you know, I'm catching my breath, you know, taking it easy. And then she goes to slide in the ring again and Asuka goes to try and stop her but she again pulls herself out. And she just takes like a couple of minutes just like trying to get in Asuka's head. Trying to avoid, trying to work out the best method of attack here. And she wants to do something like grab a chair, like throw the chair in the ring. Then actually tosses the chair in the ring the referee turns to pick it up. Asuka looks at it and then she rushes it in. She jumps Asuka from behind. But Asuka just no-sells it. She turns around. Bang! Twats Cora Jade. And locks her in the Asuka lock. And she taps in about three minutes. So another dominant victory for Asuka here. I believe this is her first match since WrestleMania. And no, she was in a six-man tag. She took a tag, actually. So yeah, first singles match. And she's made quick work of Cora Jade here tonight. Um, 69 for Cora, 80 for Asuka. Match gives her 70 because of how short it was. That's fine. But after the match, Bailey gets into the ring. And she goes to take care of Cora. 
And <laughs> I imagine, like, because Asuka's like, I am Bailey up. And Bailey and Asuka sort of, like, have a weird face off. And then Asuka just, like, looks at her, smiles. And she goes to give Bailey the mist in the face. But Bailey grabs Cora and, like, pulls Cora in front of her. And Cora takes the hit for Bailey. And it's like, she's screaming in pain. Like, it's like that hot, spicy mist that, like, fucks her eyes up and shit. And Cora takes the, the bullet for us, for Bailey. And Cora's writhing in pain on the floor again. And Bailey sort of looking nervously down at her, then looking up at Asuka nervously. And then Asuka sort of, like, waves goodbye and then, like, leaves the ring. And Bailey just looks on all nervously as the referees and shit, like, put, they, like, put in the towel on Cora's face and shit. Dakota Kai not around because she is preparing for the um, Fatal 4-Way. So, that explains her absence. We then head to the back. Kayla is with one of the newest singles breakout stars here on SmackDown, Lyra Valkyria. Full member of the Schism, she says, and now, after the draft, you're now spreading your own wings here on SmackDown. And Lyra, of course, is like, you know, spreading wings is the perfect metaphor for what I'm about to do here on SmackDown because free from the control of anybody else... I've got to do what I've got to do, and that's fight. And like a crow in the night, take no prisoners and go wherever I need to go and soar my way to the top of SmackDown. That's going to start with my first match here tonight. And then we hear Tiffany walk. He's like, oh, sorry, excuse me. Oh, my God. You're the weird bird girl. Okay, I've heard so much about you, like, but, like, Okay, uh, you must be mistaken if you think you're going to sort of the top of this show because there's only one spot, one for one person at the top of the show, and that's me. I'm the star, I'm the center of the universe. The entire show rolves around me, not you. And I was like, oh, you're talking a lot of talk, Tiffany. Why don't you prove it? Why don't I make my SmackDown in-ring debut tonight against you? And Tiffany goes, oh, you want to immediately step up to me because you know I'm the, the hottest thing on the show and I'm the best and the brightest star. So you want to sort of get that on yourself i don't blame you at all personally but you're gonna show the world how not on my level you are because it's not even a tiffany epiphany it's just a matter of fact once i show you up you should be too scared to show your face here. you better go running back behind a mask toodles and then of course mariah away the camera woman filming the whole thing walks away with tiffany so setting up live of valkyria versus tiffany stratton tonight Sounds like a match I've never seen before anywhere. <laughs> we then cut back to the ring. And guess who sat there on a chair but good old Bobby Fish. He goes, right, 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 ladies and gentlemen, smack down. A moment of your time, please. So, this is the first episode of Smackdown after the WWE draft. And what a draft it was for the blue brand, ladies and gentlemen. Got a new world heavyweight champion, Carmelo Hayes, who's going to prove... That he deserves that championship over a guy like Pete Dunn. And I mean, folks, where's the lie? We've also got many new women stars looking to break out. We just saw Lyra, Tiffany, they got Florence, Sonia Deville. This may be the most stacked women's division I've ever seen. Folks, where's the lie? But most importantly, SmackDown made. The greatest acquisition of the 2023 WWE Draft when they brought over to SmackDown the hardest thing in WWE, the next World Heavyweight Champion, flying solo, Mr. Bobby Fish. And I mean, folks, where's... Cut off by the music of Buddy Bloody Murphy. And Buddy Murphy's in the ring. And Bobby Fish goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Did, did, what you doing out here, buddy? I'm not, I'm not finished here yet, okay? I was too busy talking about how Bobby Fish, the hottest thing in WWE, is the brightest rising star here on SmackDown. But you've ruined that with your ginger hair and your ugly beard and your... What, what are we even doing here? Where's your friend, okay? You got abandoned by Dijak because you weren't cutting the mustard. I branched on my own because I was ho I was being held back. Folks, where's the bang? Need the face. And we get an impromptu match. Bobby Murphy versus Bobby Fish. 
goes eight minutes. Gets an eighty rating. That's actually pretty good. And Buddy Buddy Murphy does beat Bobby Fish in eight forty eight with the Murphy's Law. Seventy nine for Buddy Buddy Murphy and a sixty one for Bobby Fish. And yeah, Bob Buddy flying solo. Dijak is back in NXT. Obviously, I'm gonna he's he gonna do the whole Dijak thing down there instead of sticking around as fucking Dijakovic, whatever the fuck I had him called. And then Buddy Murphy still with that titanium leg, of course. You can't forget that. But he's flying solo on SmackDown, the project of for rehabbing my quote unquote most underutilized star of last season begins here. And hopefully it doesn't end here. Because I do want to commit to getting Buddy back up. He's, he was one of the early challenge run success stories. I know I want to get him back up there. Oni is a lost cause, but <laughs> Buddy, I can probably still get up there. And then cut to Adam Pierce's office. When he interrupted by Angel Garza walking in. And he goes, mm, Mr. Pierce. He goes, first of all, thank you for drafting me to SmackDown. I knew that you valued me as a key part of this show, but I just have one question for you. And he goes, yes, how can I help? And he goes, I'm looking for someone. A, a, a woman. I just, ah, the name escapes me. He goes, okay, well, come on, spit it out. What does she look like? And then the guy's like, she's beautiful. She's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. And then the three other women behind guys all sort of look at each other all awkwardly and then sort of just shrug and then turn back around. She's breathtaking flowing blonde locks blue hair and Pierce goes you're losing me guys okay so I don't know what you're doing you're describing a lot of people on this roster right now like well who is this Charlotte Tiffany and he goes oh no 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 she's not here all the time she's my white whale Adam Pierce and I have to find out where she is Pierce goes great well Go talk to somebody who knows who you're looking for, because I certainly don't, and I've got a show to run. So, if that's all you've got to say, why don't you skadoodle on out of my office? And Gaza goes, See, I will look for my white whale, my holy grail, my next top milf. <laughs> oh boy we're in for a ride here ladies and gentlemen speaking of being in for a ride we then cut to the ring with Karrion Cross and the Karrion Cross cult he goes you know I've been on this show for a week now and I'm already sick of the disrespect you see when I was on Raw all I was doing was Massacring anybody who stepped in my path. I was the most dominant force to ever step foot on WWE. But I carved a smackdown and it's almost like nobody wants me in the draft. I mean, I get it. For your roster's safety, you don't want to draft us because we're dangerous. But I see all these people saying, oh, Karrion Cross, there is Mr. Irrelevant because he got picked last in the draft. No, kid. Let me explain something to you. It's for everybody else's own safety that I got picked last in the draft because nobody wanted their blood on my hands and their metaphorical hands. Because now I'm on SmackDown with a K and it's time to bring my brand of genocide to the blue brand. The question is, is there anybody that volunteers to be my first victim. It's all about family. It's all about the business. Huh? He's then interrupted by the music of the Tony D'Angelo family. And out comes Tony D. You know, after last week he said he was going to be here with the family. And it's him... Um, Troy Two Dimes Donovan, Channing Stacks Lorenzo, and Electra Mon Lopez. And they make their way out, you know, all sharply dressed, suits and dress for Electra. And he gets into the ring. And Tony takes the mic. And before you say the can goes, Hey! Look at this kid. Come on, come on, kid, come here. You're flattering me by thinking you could take it to us, but why don't you give us 
the rundown. Who you are before I massacre you. And he's like, my name is Tony D'Angelo. And Smackdown, this is my yard now. Our yard, you see, wherever the family goes, we always come out on top. Because it's about the gabagool, you gay. And I've got by my side my, my family. You may have got your, your cult here carrying and you sure do look very close. But you ain't thicker than us. We're thicker than blood. We got here, this guy, Stax Lorenzo. Channing Stax Lorenzo, he's all about making that stacks, and he made me make them fact stacks together, you dig? Troy, two dimes Donovan. Same story. I got two dimes for every time he knocks somebody loop. Got Electra, the mole of the group. She's the right hand woman, you know. She's all about making business plans, business deals for the family. And this, this right here is an interesting proposition, Mr. Cross, because you seem to think that Smackdown is now the land of the Carrion Cross cult. Well, I say, forget about it. Because from this day forward, this land is property of the D'Angelo family. And if you got a problem with that, then I say, we've got a problem with you. And carrying this sort of like us, <laughs> well look who it is. First day on the job, you pick on the biggest dog you can find. I get it, kid. You want to make an impact around here on your first day. But if you want to step in my face, this is going to be a big problem. And Tony just laughs. He goes, big problem, huh? Big problem. It's very funny that you use those words, Carrion, because... We, we, we ain't a big problem. You, you ain't a big problem. And he sort of, we can hear like the crowd sort of like murmuring. And Car Tony points behind Carrion and he goes, he, he's a big problem. And Carrion goes, who, what the fuck? He turns around. And he's dropped by a boot. By Big Cass. Big problem Cass. Lays out carrying cross with a big boot. And then I imagine Jackson, and... Uh, Stacks and... Um, two dimes. Brew with Carcass and Cutler. Leave them laying. And then Tony lays out carrying cross with that. Forget about it. And... He goes... You guys make a smack down. Thanks for having us. The family. Is it to take care of business. He drops the mic, music plays, he goes on the top rope, he goes, yeah, forget about it. <laughs> so yes, there's the full group, Big Problem Cass, also now a part of the group. Because, you know, I've had, I've had him in the group for a while, like, since he was been in AEW, I was like, you know, he sort of, like, he seems like he's turned himself around, he deserves a second run. Um, so Big Cass is the enforcer, he's a big problem for all of Tony's enemies. And he won't be that big of a problem for a while, because he is currently injured. I will say, um, he's out for six months, but he's got surgery I can do on him tomorrow. So I'm going to do it on him tomorrow. And then we're going to see if that lowers him or if it goes wrong. But don't expect him to actually wrestle a match for a while, but he can work angles. So he's here. He got physical. He, he can do a big boot. with a, he's, it's, a, it's like a torn peck I think he's got. Or he can throw a big boot with that. It's fine. But he's not going to get very physical for a while because, yeah, he's injured. But the D'Angelo family have arrived here on SmackDown. They then cut backstage. Kayla is with Cammy and Io. And Kayla says, you know, it's only nine days away from Judgment Day where you, Io Sky, will have a rematch against your former best friend, former tag team chairman, partner, Kyrie Sane. And recently it's got a even more heated between you two. And then Cammy sort of cuts her off and she goes, okay, so Kayla, here's the gist, okay? Io just wants what's best for Kyrie. Okay. Kyrie has gotten soft and complacent during the times that Io was away. Hell yeah, she became the SmackDown Women's Champion, but she sort of less wrestled on her laurels. And that's why she lost the thing, okay? So all Io's doing is proving why she's on the right side of this, and Kyrie, Kyrie's sticking to her pirate princess, adorable little shtick. And it's getting her nowhere, okay? Because. If you want to hang with a Joshi Judas, the genius of the sky, you're going to have to get to her level. You're going to have to get to her brain and pick inside and get, take yourself to that sick, twisted place that uh, only she can go. 
okay, so WrestleMania was a cakewalk. Judgment Day is going to be a cakewalk. And then after that, we're done with Kyrie. What's there to prove after that point? Then as they're talking, I was on the screen behind them, like sort of goes all staticky. And we see like a a dark mirror or something on a boat. And Kyrie just slowly walks up to the mirror. She like she looks at herself. And then like looks down at the sink or whatever. And then looks back up. And she has the the dark Kyrie face paint on. And <laughs> She just she just looks at herself like kind of. I imagine she's kind of putting on herself in a mirror or something like that. And she's like, "You want sick, twisted? See ya at Judgment Day." And she leaves like the pirate steering wheel in the it on on the windowsill or whatever. Leaves it behind as she has embraced her evil dark Kyrie side for this match. Sixty-seven. It's actually not bad for this match. It's um Lyra versus um Tiffany. And the match goes nine minutes eleven. And I imagine Mariah of Maze at ringside recording the whole thing on the camera. But towards the end of the match, Hams and Morgan run out. And I imagine they probably knock Mariah May to the floor, steal the camera, and Morgan's filming Hams doing some shit around ringside. And Tiffany goes, What the hell are you doing? Get off my camera, ew. And then as she turns around, Lyra kit hits her with that big kick and pins her to win her SmackDown debut match. Um, 66 for Lyra, 45 for Tiffany. And if it wasn't for the distractions of the DKE girls, who knows how this would have gone, but Lyra is victorious in her SmackDown debut here tonight. A big win over Tiffany. Actually, the first, Tiffany's first L, I think, as well. But yeah, big, big win for Lyra on her SmackDown debut. We then head backstage to Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And they're just having a chat. And he says, you know, WrestleMania, you know, we've been trying to get back into the tag team title picture since WrestleMania, but we've got those Aussie Open guys, they're here, they're fighting Cesaro and Brian at Judgment Day, so we've got to keep an eye on that match because once that match is over, we're next in line. And Kevin goes, you know, there's one thing I've never been here in WWE. In I've been a Universal Champion. I've been a Carnell Champion, US Champion. I've never been Tag Team Champions. And there's not a more fitting person for me to win that first Tag Team title with than Sami Zayn. And then walking past is Trick Williams, now in his ring gear, and Carmelo Hayes for the world title. And he goes, sorry, I I, I think I, I must have misheard you talking right there. Because you said you've done everything there's to do here in WWE. Oh, that's a lie, Kevin. You know it's a lie because you ain't never held this. You ain't never been him. And Kevin goes, oh, I've been him. I've been him. I'm still him. Okay. And you better stop running your mouth because the second I become the tag team champion, I'm going to start taking a look at singles gold as well. And I'm going to be a double champion. And guess what title I'm coming after? Because it ain't Cody's because I'm on SmackDown. It's yours, buddy. So you better watch your mouth. And be say, oh, 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 let me talk to you. LA Knight walks into frame. And he goes, Carmelo Hayes, congratulations. Just see, you know, you and I, we've had a bit of seen our issues the last couple of months, and I, I quite like your finish, but first thing I want to say is congratulations on becoming the World Heavyweight Champion. I always knew you had it in you. That's true. LA Knight was a believer, yeah. But here's the deal breaker. I'm so happy to see you be the champion. No, no, I am, truly. Truly am happy for you. Because... When it comes to me beating your ass, there's now going to be a little piece of gold hanging in the balance. And the second you feel like your reign is coming to an end, ho-ho, oh, you come and see L.A. Knight. Yeah. And he walks off. Kevin and Sammy Zane also walk off. And Kamala Hayes sort of looks, like, staggered. And Trick's like, don't let him get to you, Mello. Don't let him get to you, Mello. I'm going to take care of that bruiserweight bum tonight, Mello. And then you can worry about these bums another day. Mello clearly vexed that there's already a number of challenges coming out of the woodwork for his crown. We then cut to Hit Row in the studio, recording their next verse. And then Swerve steps out and he goes, Yo, Riddle, you know, you must have that was real cute last week, you know, bringing in Snoop. You know, yeah, you know. 
you know, I, I know a thing or two about having rapper friends. You, you like to flex them, you know, you do. Because it makes you, it makes you feel cool and hip. But Swerve, he is cool and hip and he's the United States champion. So here's what the deal is. If you want to bring your WWE Hall of Famer friend, the D-O-double-G, back here, well, I say he doesn't come back here without a fight. Okay? So, me and you, Riddle, one last time, Judgment Day. Me and my friend, Rick Ross, against you and the D-O-double-G. What do you say? I'll get Rick on the line. I'm sure he'll love to whip your ass too, Riddle. Let me know if you've got the balls to step to us. <laughs> so Swerve laying down the challenge for a tag team match at Judgment Day. Where he will team with Rick Ross against Matt Riddle and Snoop Doggy Dog. We can only hope that Riddle and Snoop accept that. They cut backstage to um, Morgan and Hams. They found out Matt with Fallon and they were laughing at, you know, <laughs> stealing Tiffany's camera. When Tiffany walks up, she goes, Ew, I bet you thought that you were so funny out there. Like, first of all, I, I knew you were losers, but now it turns out you're not funny either. You know, what, what are you actually good at? Like, you're not good at wrestling. You're not good at being funny. You're not good at being entertaining. You're just, you're not pretty. You're not anything. It's like, well, why are you here? What is? What purpose do you serve? Morgan goes, Yeah, oh, you know, you're not funny when the boots on the other foot, huh? And I thought it was pretty funny. So, and Tiffany goes, I've had it up to here with you. Okay, I tried to let you down gently and tell you that you need to stop wasting your time with these two idiots. If you want to keep ignoring me, that's fine. I'm done trying to save you. But if you want to keep getting up in my grill and trying to ruin my life and ruin my career and hang my first L here on SmackDown, then they're going to fly, toots. Okay, so, in the biggest Tiffany epiphany I've had yet, how about you, and you, point to Hamza Morgan, against me and Mariah, at Judgment Day, then we can prove to the whole world on the big stage that you're not as good as we are. Toodles. And Tiffany and Mariah may walk off, and Fallon's like, well, are you going to sit back and take that? And Morgan's like, well, we'll see, you know, we'll see at Judgment Day. So, yeah, there's your kickoff match for Judgment Day. It's going to be DKE against Mariah May and Tiffany Stratton. Needed a kickoff match. Didn't book one by accident on Backlash. This seemed like the perfect one to stick on there this time round. 75 rated tag team match here. Um, Aussie Open against the Limit Breakers. And in 15 minutes and 13, it is Aussie Open picking up another big win. On their path to Judgment Day. Pinning Keith Lee with an airplane spin. Um, Brad Sawyer. Um, 83 for Keith. 76 for Braun. 57 for Kyle and Rogers. And a 55 for Brad Sawyer. And yeah. The momentum for Aussie Open rolls towards Judgment Day. Where they're going to face off against Cesaro and Daniel Bryan. For the tag team titles. But momentum is very much not. On the side of the Limit Breakers right now. And Scott Steiner. He lets that be known. He gets into the ring. He shoves Keith Lee on his ass. That's what you're doing, Keith. Huh? Thought you had my nephew's best interest in heart, huh? You're just a fat loser. And Bron goes, Scott, 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 relax. He goes, no, he's holding your back, Bronson. You don't see it. You're too nice, kid. You're too nice. You gotta be big papa pump. You gotta get that side out of you. You know? You're glad your dad's not around here because he'd be embarrassed by you. And then everyone's like, oh... And Bronson, uh, Bron, Bron, is looking like he's going to try. He's holding back the urge to smack him. And Scott goes, what's it? You're going to smack me? You're going to smack Uncle Scott, huh? Huh? Am I getting under your skin, Bronson? It's this fat ass you should be smacking. He's trying to brag you down. There's only one way that they're going to settle this. And that's whipping his ass in a singles match. And Bron goes, well, I don't want to fight Keith. And then Scott looks, he just laughs. He goes, who's in it about you? And then he turns to Keith Lee. He goes, listen up, Keith. You think you're all good? You think you've got what it takes to be a great partner, a great friend to my nephew? Prove it. Face me one-on-one -on -one at Judgment Day. And then we'll see if you've got what it takes to hang with a big bad booty daddy. And Keith Lee, he's still sort of staggering out of the match and the loss and game challenge. He's like, he's trying to take it all in. Like, wait, is Scott Steiner challenging me to a match at Judgment Day? Because that's right. And Keith goes, well, uh, I don't know what to say other than 
you're on. So there's the match. Scott Steiner against Keith Lee for Judgment Day. Never in a million years I think I'll book that match on pay-per-view, but I got a goal to make a 60-year-old a full-time wrestler and another goal to have somebody over 50 on every single pay-per-view. So there we go. Keith Lee versus Scott Steiner on pay-per-view. Custody of Braun Breaker ladder match. That's not actually it. <laughs> as much as that may rule, that isn't the stipulation. It's just a singles match. Braun Breaker. Oh, Keith Lee against Scott Steiner. We then cut to chase you. And. You know, they've not had a good run of things recently. You know, they had the whole run in with Goldberg. And since then, <laughs> they've sort of like not been that high morale and Undertaker's, you know, I understand that you guys are a little bit out of it right now, and I get that as a teacher here, it's my best interest to make sure that I not only teach you everything you need to know, but I also need to make sure that you're not get, getting sidetracked, you need to make sure that everything's a-okay so, I officially declared next week, Chase You Spring Break, and we're all having a spring break party, a big pop for everybody, and then Shane Brown's like, oh my god, I've got, to, I've got to buy so many drinks, you know, there could be so many girls there, we could talk to, and Brody goes, whoa, 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 Mr. Chase, what about, what about the homework for next week? And Chase, Chandra Chase goes, Bodie, you get a week off, <laughs> and then the, everyone else is like celebrating. And then Haley pulls out, like, well, a week off from homework? Well, how do you expect me to fill my time about a week of homework? And Fia's next to her, like, punching her on the arm. Ah, oh, it's going to be so great. It's spring break time. We're going to be so great. We're going to be so great. And then the lights flick off. Flick on and off. And then everyone looks at like, Mr. Chase, what's going on? And he goes, I don't know. It must be a, a school, a university-wide power cut. And then on the screen in the room, we see Alba Fire and Iona Webb cook, cooking something up. Like the witches that they are. And they say, yo, you know, the great competition here on SmackDown is riveting. And there are so many options for us. But there's one place that we need to find a new home. And I can't think of a better place than to take down Chase U. And they giggle each other. And then the lights come back on as the video ends. And Andre Chase looks around. And Fear and Hayes sort of look at Andre Chase and go, Are we supposed to do anything about them? And Andre Chase sort of looks off, he goes, I suppose we'll have to at some point, but enjoy your spring break next week and we'll return to regularly scheduled Chase you the following week. But they will leave for spring break, but kind of a somber, eerie cloud hanging over the whole thing. <laughs> we then come back to the ring where La French Connection are stood. And he's like, silence, 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 silence. Je m'appelle David Maton. Elle s'appelle Violet Maton. Et Idris Inofe et Malik Blade. And we are not best pleased with Monsieur Pierce. Because Monsieur Pierce knows that La French Connection are valuable assets to Le Bleu brand. But yet no match for La French Connection here tonight. He says this is land of opportunity. Well, I don't see any opportunity for us on the night show, so anybody here who thinks they're coming to take over SmackDown, come and catch El Le Hands. And out comes Dolph Ziggler on the Grand Jury, and... Ziggler, he, he laughs and he goes, you know, you're a good kid. Dav David Martin, you're a good kid. And he's like, David Maton. And he goes, Dav, whatever, whatever you just said. He goes, Listen, I've been there, you know, I've been the rookie. I've been the guy who latched onto a silly little group that he probably shouldn't have been a part of just to try and get ahead in my career. Let me tell you something, kid, it doesn't work out long term. Okay? It takes years of hard work and dedication to get to the point where I am today. But I can be that leader. I can be that guy that everybody depends on to put in that spot. They say, hey, look, here's Dolph Ziggler. We know what he's doing. He's going to make a star. 
and I've had enough of making stars. There is one person who's going to break out. It's going to be somebody who's been held in for the last 20 damn years, and that's easy. Okay, because I see Carmelo Hayes, great wrestler, him, future big star. That's going to be me, and my quest to get to the top starts right here, right now, and you are in the way. And then we get Dave David Mator against Dolph Ziggler. Gets a fucking 90. Um, I guess Dolph was spitting. He does make stars. Because he gives a star making performance to David Mator here. Um, Ziggler beats him in 952 with a super kick. 86 for Dolph. 75 for David Mator. And yeah. Holy shit. Why is this so good? He got capped for a short match length. Nice. But yeah Dolph Ziggler gets a win. His return to SmackDown. Um, the rest of the Grand Jury with him, Scarlet, there as well. But she's just his manager now. And yeah, big victory. Banger victory over David Maton. We then cut backstage to the medical room. Where Cora's still getting her like eyes checked out from the from the poison mist. And Bailey's sort of watching on, looking at her. When Kayla walks in, she goes, Bailey, earlier on tonight we saw Asuka, you know, spit mist in the baby. I know we saw, okay. You know, Asuka, she thinks she's getting in our heads, okay? She got in the head of Dakota before WrestleMania. She's trying to get in Cora's head now. She's now she's trying to get in mine. While well, I don't let anybody in this head because you should be running scared of me. I was a SmackDown Women's Champion, okay? Grand Slam Champion. You're messing with the wrong woman, Asuka. You're going to spit mist in Cora's face, huh? Well, not on my watch. If you want a match with me... After you beat Dakota, you beat Cora. Listen, bitch. I've been sussing you out. I've been plotting and scheming since WrestleMania is a way to take you down. At uh, Judgment Day, aptly named show, it's going to be yours. And then Bailey walks off, and the camera sort of lingers on Dakota. Or Cora, looking around. She goes, Oh, where's Bailey? Where's Bailey? She goes, Bailey left. She goes, Dakota? And then the medical's like, Well, Dakota was never here. And she goes, Ah, just keep getting, getting it out of my eye. Here's a segment. We see Indy Hartwell and Sanger having a chat. Because remember, they are sort of linked. Because they were both in Sasha's group. But Sasha's on Raw now, they're both on SmackDown. And Indy's like, you know, you know, I loved being with Sasha. You know, she taught me so much in my career. But I think now, now I'm on SmackDown, she's on Raw. I haven't got that safety blanket. I've really been, for lack of a better term, thrown into the deep end. And I've got to try and swing, sink or swim Sanger. And let me tell you. I'm swimming. I'm swimming right to the very top. So, the rest of the women's division can take notice because it's about to be impressive here. Next week, I'm going to step into that ring and I'm going to win on my quest to becoming the new SmackDown Women's Champion. And then Indy walks off and Sanger goes, good luck, good luck. He turns around and he's face to face with Omos. And <laughs> then next to Omos steps Veer Mahan. And then Malcolm Bivens is in the middle of them all, like looking really small. He goes, well, 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 big guy. You seem to be doing quite well for yourself here on SmackDown. You know, here in WWE. you come a long way since me and Olvir here took you under our wing. But let me tell you what. Do you really think there's room to grow on SmackDown by yourself? Listen, you're a big guy. You're a talented guy and all, but let's face it. Together, we're stronger. Look at the Nigerian giant Omas. Look at Veer Mahan, who's unloaded on everybody's ass since he first came here in WWE. There's prime pickings here on the Blue Brand Sanger. And I know you and Veer, you're a good team. So, let me just, just think about it and get back to me because you know it. As much as you don't want to admit it. You miss all Malcolm Bivens. And then he walks off with the rest of them. And then Indy sort of walks back up to Sanger and she's like, What did they want? And he's like, Oh it's it's nothing. Candison comes out. It's just a quick entrance, her making her way out to join commentary for the fatal four way. Um Florence, Dakota Kai, Yutami Haishishta, and Sonya Deville. The winner goes to Judgment Day to get a SmackDown Women's Championship match against Candice LeRae. Match gets an 82. 
Um, Candace apparently dragged the match down by not being a very good commentator. Um, yes. And to no one's shock, it's Utami who does pick up the win. She submits Sonya Deville with an Argentine backbreaker rack. Sonya mainly only there to take the fall, so I don't have to give it to either of the other two women. Um, 73 for Dakota, 79 for Florence, 77 for Sonya, and 88 for Utami. That's a very good rating, and clearly the right winner picked based on those ratings. But yeah, it is. Utami versus Candice confirmed for Judgment Day, and then after the match... Candice gets up off the desk, gets in the ring, shakes Utami's hand, and they holds the belt. She holds the belt up. Utami has a look at the belt and all that shit. Just friendly handshake between champion and challenger heading into the pay per view. Speaking of the pay per view, we've got a lot of um, big matches announced for the show now coming out. Starting with officially confirmed, it will be Daniel Bryan and Cesaro. Defending their SmackDown Tag Team Championships against the Aussie Opens, Kyle and Rogers and Brad Sawyer, you know. They've only been on SmackDown a month, but they've already laid waste to the SmackDown Tag Team Division. Can they take home the belts at Judgment Day? And that's not the only tag, that's the new championship match we've got announced for that show, because it will be, as we just saw, Candice LeRae defending the SmackDown Women's Championship against Utami Hayashishta. And then for women's action, doesn't stop there because we heard the big claim by Bailey earlier on tonight. And it's going to be her and Asuka one on one. And this continued rivalry between Asuka and all of damage control. She's beaten Dakota, she's beaten Cora. Can she get the better of the role mod? We'll find out in nine days. Also, in nine days, will be possibly one of the pay view matches to ever take place as Keith Lee takes on. Big Papa Pump himself, Scott Steiner, you know, Braun Breaker will be out there doing something, who knows what, but Keith Lee and Scott Steiner been at loggerheads over Braun Breaker for the last couple of weeks, so finally them two will go face to face, and possibly the biggest match of all, as the United States Champion Swerve Scott will team up with his friend Rick Ross, I nearly said Riddick, Rick Ross to take on the team of Matt Riddle and the D-O-double-G himself, D-O-B Hall of Famer Snoop Dogg, and then also be heard on the kickoff show, Tiffany Stratton will team with her photographer, camera lady Mariah May, to take on Morgan Daniels and Hans Katana of DKE. I've just realized right now that the cameraman is that Esteban guy, and um, Mariah is the stylist. So yeah, anyway, the stylist Mariah May and Tiffany Stratton against DKE on the kickoff for Judgment Day. 79 rated main event, not great, but for having Trick in it, it's actually not that bad. Um, but yeah, obviously Pete Dunne wins with the bitter end in 13-26. 93 for Pete Dunne, 57 for old Tricky Willie. And yeah, first big main event for Trick, and he didn't do terribly. Like, 57's fine, 79's a decent match. But then after the match, Pete Dunne goes to deliver another beat. He goes to, like, do the finger snap spot on Trick. But Carmelo Hayes flies in, hits him with a belt, hits nothing but net, leaves Pete Dunne laying, and we end the show with Melo holding that new World Heavyweight Championship up in the air. Well, I say end of the show. We we get the little graphic pops up. Like, that's the end of the in-ring portion, because we can actually end with the sit-down face-to-face between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Um, I imagine the format is, um, if you've ever seen, like, like, before a big boxing fight, they do this all the time. They do, like, the gloves at Roth thing, where it's, like, there's a guy sat in the middle, and then they're, they're both either side of a table. And they just sit there, they just start shooting the shit, like, in a dark room for, um, a couple of minutes. And it starts on Adam Pierce's face, he goes, Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I've been promised no physicality here. It's been made very clear that if either of these men get physical in this room, that they will be fired. From not just SmackDown, but from the entire day, we Now, with that in mind, please welcome my guests, Roman Reigns and Seth freaking Rollins. Because, boys, it's been a long time coming. You two have been at each other's throats for nearly two whole years now. And when is it going to end? Well, I'll tell you when it's going to end. And that's going to be in nine days at Judgment Day. When you, Seth Rollins, and you, Roman Reigns, will be a part 
of a six-man tag team match inside Hell in a Cell. Now, as I said, the gloves are off. Fire away. And Seth is... <laughs> nine days. Nine days, Roman. Had nine days left of you on my show. Because, let me tell you this, Roman. This town, this brand, this blue brand, it ain't big enough for me and you. Do you really think that after this, we can coexist together on the same show without trying to rip each other's throats out? I mean, I can. I don't know about you, because you're going to be the one filled with rage and jealousy when I put you and your little cousins down inside that cell. But it didn't have to be this way, Roman. But you decided to make it all about you. That's all it's ever been, Roman. It's only ever been all about Roman Reigns. The shield was all about Roman Reigns. The breakup of the shield when I took a chair to your back. That became all about Roman Reigns. My runs at the top of this company were all about Roman Reigns. And then you had the nerve to punch me in the jaw, SummerSlam, Wembley Stadium. This all started then. The Tribal Chief was born. And the Tribal Chief hasn't had one moment of peace. Because ever since that day, Roman, I've had a vengeance. I've been not going to let you sleep. I'm not going to be able to sleep until you are finished. And now, well, look around you. You had your bloodline. You know, Jacob Fatu, Big Jacob Fatu, the Usos, and Solo. And I've already proven that I'm better for your cousins than you are. That's why two of the, the two smart ones have fled this failing bloodline and joined my cause. And those Uso boys, I guess they're just going to be collateral damage for being too stupid. And too scared to go out on their own without their big brother, the tribal chief, watching their back. So a judgment day. Another very fitting pay view name, because it's going to be judgment day for the bloodline. When I kill it once and for all. Stick a knife in its back and twist it. Hell, stick a chair. And it's back. <laughs> and Roman Soldier just looks at him. He goes, you're done. Okay? You're done. Listen. You gave a fine speech. You seem confident in yourself and your boys. My, my family on your side. But let me tell you this, Seth. When this is all over, at the judgment day when I've smashed you, I've smashed my own cousins to prove why it takes... To be the big guy around here. The tribal chief. What are you going to do? You're walking around with Solo. And with Jacob. These are my, This is my family. My bloodline. And once I expose to them. And to the world. That being with Seth freaking Rollins. Isn't better off. What do you have? Scratch that. If you win, or if you lose, and you're done with me, what do you have, Seth? Your entire existence, for nearly two years now, has revolved around me. You said it earlier on, you said, oh, everything's got to revolve around Roman Reigns, because you made it that way, Seth. The shield didn't revolve around me, that was three brothers that you tore apart, because you were selfish, because you wanted to get ahead. Now I, I'm trying to get ahead. I've got my cousins watching my back. And now it's a problem all of a sudden. Well, you see, it is a problem for you. Because congratulations, if you did, you got into my family's head. I've now got to find two of my cousins inside her and her cell. And that's what you did. 
because you have a way of manipulating the minds of people around yourself. That's why I even teamed with you back at SummerSlam. Because I thought, oh, you know, this is Seth Rollins, you know, the guy who stabbed me and my brothers in the back. Maybe I'll give him a second chance. Nah, I only smashed you because I knew you were going to smash me first. Because that's the way you are, Seth. You're a pathetic little man. And once this is all over between me and you, you're lost. You're lost if you lose a Judgment Day. And if you win a Judgment Day, you're still lost. Because without me, you're nothing. You can become 10-time WWE Champion. But there's going to be that one thing in the back of your mind. says that I couldn't get the job done when it all mattered the most. On the bloodline, stop me from bringing an end to their reign once and for all. And that's going to eat at you until you take your last breath, Seth Rollins. And Seth just goes, ha! You, um... You, you are... Making a lot of... A lot of points here, Roman, but... The fact is... There is one thing that I will be... After I beat you and end the bloodline at Judgment Day, and that's free. You're right. This entire thing has ruined my entire life, and I don't know who I'm going to be once I prove to the world right and I end this bloodline. But I know one thing I will be, and that's relieved. Relieved that finally, after all these years, you are exposed as what you really are. And that's a fraud. Because we'll, we'll see it at Judgment Day. And PH goes steps in. Ladies and gentlemen, it is official at Judgment Day. Inside hell in a cell, Roman Reigns will team with the Usos to take on Seth freaking Rollins and Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu with... And they sort of look at him. He goes, I have to do this, boys. It makes me look silly based on my draft, but I can't have this going on anymore. The losing team at Judgment Day leaves SmackDown. And then Roman and Seth will just stare at each other as the show goes off the air. 98 show. That's pretty good because the main event got 79. Um, yeah. Next up is Velocity, and I'm going to level with you. I have no fucking idea if I set up any matches for this week's Velocity. I don't think I did, because I, I think Raymond Tino 14 he had last week, but it's been so long I may have forgotten that. May maybe this week, who knows? Might have been five weeks ago, but yeah, I don't think there's anything special planned for Velocity tonight, but I'll cook something up. Velocity kicks off with um, Hooventude versus Drew Gulak. Um, Hoovy, you know, was part of the losing team in the trio style match at Judgment Day. But he gets a rebound win here tonight. He beats Drew Gulak. 13 41. Sit out Scoop Slam Driver. 92 for Drew Gulak. Fuck me. And a 45 for Hoovy. And yeah, Hoovy's out here on his own tonight for a match. And that's with good reason because after his win, out comes Rey Mysterio, the Cruiserweight Champion. And he goes, congratulations, Hoovy. You know, it's awesome to see you here on Velocity, you know, kicking ass in 2023, just like me. And that's why coming up, Hoovy, we've got an event that's very near and dear to Cruiserweight Wrestling Hearts at Starcade. And me and you, we've been to war together for many territories, including WCW and ECW. So... And speaking of RJ City, I can't think of a more fitting match for Starcade, WCW's one night stand, than Rey Mysterio defending the Cruiserweight Championship against Hoovy. And of course, Rey and Hoovy shake hands. And yeah, I, I agree. I can't think of a more. I, I saw Hoovy was there. I remember he was there. I was like, yeah, you know, I can't do Eddie, obviously. So he's probably the next best choice. So it's Rey versus Hoovy at Starcade with the Cruiserweight title. 73. Fucking hell, that's a good match. Scripts continues his run of momentum. He beats up 
beats Evan Bourne in 9.34. Um, 51 for scripts, 75 for Evan Bourne. And he leaves, you know, the the calling card on Evan Bourne's chair. How he beats him, you know, let him know that scripts was here. Or, like, he writes his name on a card and puts it on him or whatever. Whatever it was, scripts did. 63 for a six-man tag team match is going to be the Lady Killers. Zachary Venture, Gregor Ferguson, and Sid Cottrell, who beat Dale Sanford, Lester Blackburn, and Jason Swade, three NXT guys. In 13 minutes and 10 seconds, Zachary Venture pins Sanford with a champagne super knee bar. Pins him with a knee bar, okay. 36 for Sid Cottrell, 58 for Gregor Ferguson, 70 for Zachary, 51 for Jason Swade, 51 for Lester Blackburn, and 54 for Dale Sanford. And the main event is not very good at all, because I forgot Roderick Strong is the shit one. Um, Axiom and Roderick Strong, he gets a 66. I should have done well better than that. But, noted about Roddy, okay. Um, Roddy wins in 13.51 with a Gibson driver. Re- again, rebound win, because he lost the backlash. 65 for Roderick Strong and a 56 for Axiom. And that ends. Velocity gets a 69. Um, what matters more is what you thought of the show, mainly of SmackDown, but also if you thought if you thought Velocity was super good this week, do let me know. I'll see you next time for Mine Night Raw, week two of May. See you then.